Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another Soulful Conversations. Um, so glad to have you here. And it's my pleasure to share with you Colby Smith, who is an attorney, uh, yoga teacher, and breathwork practitioner. Welcome, Colby. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. How about them Phillies, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was in Philadelphia last night, actually, and everything is um, all lit up for the Phillies. Red, evidently. Um, though, as somebody who is red, green, colorblind, it just looked to me <laughs> like it was all lit up. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was driving back up to Marin County. Oops, you just... I just I just lost your sound. Can you hear me now? Yes, there we go. Okay, good. Sorry about that. I was just saying that I was driving back up from um, SLN yesterday and heard a whole NPR story about the Phillies getting into... Um, the World Series. Yeah, evidently they're having to um, grease all the telephone poles and they're preparing for um, excitement, let's just say. <laughs> and, <laughs> but anyway, what I really wanted to talk to you about is, well, two things. First of all, I'm going to ask you, since you, you're an attorney, which uses a whole um, different aspect of your consciousness in your mind how do you balance that with being a yoga teacher and a breathwork practitioner um oof. okay we are diving in the so in terms also i'll address the yoga first in terms of the the yoga the style of yoga that i happen to teach um is an alignment based practice um, so from that perspective, it's very much looking for, uh, body alignment, where's your body in space, um, injury prevention and injury recovery. So from, from that standpoint, my, my little left brain, how does it all work together is, is working overtime and it, it loves that aspect. Um, in terms of linking that to yoga as a bigger practice and certainly the, the breath work practice, I, I would say that's been one of my bigger um, learning curves. I would say I'm still not fully, <laughs> fully there. I don't know that we ever, <laughs> ever get there, but um, the physical practice of yoga is really just a small aspect of what yoga is and certainly those of us here that have um, participated in breath work it would be a little bit like saying um, breath work is 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 breathing you're gonna you're gonna lay down and breathe um, yes you will and at the same time there's also a, a massive component of of the unknown there's a massive component of self-discovery there's a massive component of of figuring out what we carry around why we carry it around and how we can let it go so um so that's the that's the that's the jump that my 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 lawyer brain is is never <laughs> is never gonna quite get there and and to be honest that's the that's that's sort of the beauty of it. I don't I don't know that there is is there. Maybe, um, but but I feel like as long as there remains the question, as as long as there remains something that we don't quite understand, um, that's such rich such a rich environment to to learn and to grow. And that is the intersection um, for me hmm. of, of the physical practice of yoga um, as well as the breath work. That's a great, great answer. Great way to hold it. For somebody who may, might be watching this, and I know there are many in this group who are doing the splits, you know, who have one foot <laughs> in a job that maybe they like, maybe they hate, at least it pays the bills. Um, somewhere on that spectrum. And then they have another foot that's, that's where 
they would really like to be full time. Their their sense of calling, their work as teachers, as healers. How have you balanced that? How do you reconcile those two? Mm, I know, I know that one intimately. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, one one of the great yoga teachers has said that if you can hold an uncomfortable yoga position for a minute, um, you can hold yourself peacefully in any situation for an hour. Um, and who knows? I, I, can anybody <laughs> say that that's accurate? Um, however, it's, 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 it's a teaching that's always really struck close to my heart in terms of this, this, set of circumstances may not be exactly where I want to be. There might be some discomfort in it. It might, um, it, it might feel like I need to, to jump out of this immediately. And, um, and I think both the, the, the yoga and, and breath work too, frankly, there, there are situations in breath work where uh, I want to pop out. I don't, I don't want to be there in that discomfort. Um, and the teaching, I think, is really to to sit with it a bit rather than making making immediate decisions, making quick judgments just because something is uncomfortable as we label it or as we experience it. It doesn't mean that there's a right or a wrong. It simply is. So as I try to juggle practicing law, um, I look for ways that I can bring my yoga practice, that I can bring my, my yoga teaching into, into law. Um, I almost invariably, when I'm at, when I'm talking to other lawyers and they, 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 um, find out that I'm a yoga teacher, <laughs> they're always like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> you don't, you don't quite fit in here. <laughs> um, and I always find that that's a, that's a compliment. Um, my yoga <laughs> students on the, on the other hand, when they find out that I'm a, a lawyer, they're always wildly shocked. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, I do try to find the, the aspects of, of teaching. How can I, how can I carry myself with, opposing counsel? How can I carry myself in, um, in a contentious motion hearing um, with, with grace and um, hold? Again, kind of jumping back to that moment of discomfort. It might be simpler, frankly, to lose my, to lose my temper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it may be fun, <laughs> but it's probably not going to get me anywhere. Okay. Um, so, so I, that's, that's one of the ways that I try to uh, find that, find that overlap. Um, I, I, I'm also sort of continually seeking, um, is this right? Does this still feel right? Am I compromising myself? Am I, have I, have I tipped over that stage yeah. where I feel like it's, it's more compromise, um, than, than whatever I perceive to be the gains are. That's actually a great um, answer, very embodied, Verbose. very integrated <laughs> to, to the very same thing you're teaching and talking about. So it's like <laughs> walking your talk. I want to uh, switch a little bit and talk about, I know part of what you really are passionate about in your yoga teaching is this whole area of body positivity and we live in a culture, as we all know, that has these with the, the, the impossible standards of beauty that are put upon us by the fashion industry and the, the beauty industry and maybe even the porn industry for those who are into that. Um, so talk a little bit about that. Um, I, you know, I would say simply by logging into Facebook, you, we've are, we've been inundated, you know, we, we have, it's not just these industries that are selling us this idea of what beauty is, of what our bodies should be, of what the quick fix is. Um, we log into Instagram, it's, it surrounds us and it surrounds us from a, a very young age of, how how our body should be different and frankly i think the yoga community is really 
at fault in this. We walk into Lululemon and we see these images of these stunningly, perfectly beautiful, um, bendy bodies. And, and maybe we have a slight array of color. Maybe somebody's, you know, maybe a little bit, not 0% body fat. Um, and it, it's, it's discouraging. It's really difficult to hold yourself in that space and think, my body is okay. I uh, don't have 0% body fat. My belly hangs out a little bit. I've got some crow's feet. And um, so my, my practice works hard and I work hard on myself as well to, uh, again, it's take a viewpoint of what's, what's real, what's, what's now. Um, am I dieting because I want to change something or am I dieting because it feels better when I don't eat sugar? It does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so so I, I try to, to look at sort of the here and now. And then I also work hard to try and look at some of the things we grew up with um, what we're told about our bodies, what we're told about our sexuality, what we're told um, about how we should be in the world. And so much of that um, is, is just non-existent. In middle school, I was this really short, chunky kid. And um, that short, chunky kid, <laughs> I'm gonna like, tear up a little bit but he talks to me all the time um and he he affects decisions that i make now and mm. that short chunky kid it doesn't exist anymore um it was a perspective then um so what are the ways that I allow that to impact the decisions that I'm making now? And can I, can I put that down? Can I, can I say, you know what, that's what happened to you. You were bullied, you were this, you were that, but it's not real anymore. Um, and it's pretty amazing to see that in a physical practice, when we see ourselves, when we see other bodies in that physical practice, um, and and really find the beauty in somebody else's wrinkles, somebody else's belly, somebody else's whatever. I, you know, it's it's amazing to me, and, and how quickly people too. I'll just sort of interject too. People are like, oh, I don't want to see that person. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's astonishing. And I always think, you know, I don't say a word because that's their journey. But in my head, I'm like, oof, you are judging yourself harder than you're judging that other person. Yes. And that's yeah. mostly true. And, that, and beautifully and, and appreciate the, the raw honesty of it. Uh, and there's a comment from Eric Sletterland uh, saying, our younger chunky kids must be eating cookies <laughs> together. <laughs> Um, they are <laughs> and uh, and as for as a frame of reference for people who may not know you in 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 3d um you're what six feet six one six one yeah six one <laughs> heavier at the moment <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know it's funny one of the things that yoga teaches teaches or should teach is the the idea of of we remember and we forget so if you see images of of shiva he's always holding the drum the tambor um which is the heartbeat for one um all sorts of images that that we can go with but the one that i have related to most intensely is this idea we we remember we remember we're one we remember we're perfect then we forget <laughs> mm -hmm. and then we're going to remember again and so to give ourselves space to hold both of those um both of those ideas at the same time has been really powerful for me again sort of circling back to the very beginning of the conversation i i don't 
I don't see a, 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 a final. Maybe I'm a, I'm a bitter yogi, but I don't think there's, um, <laughs> I don't think we suddenly, suddenly reach enlightenment because we have a cute Lululemon outfit on. <laughs> <laughs> a bitter yogi, that's cute. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned Shiva because I know he's sort of like your main um, deity. Uh, your studio is, is called Shankara Shiva. Um, as my as my understanding is that it's the Shiva that represents the household, that's associated with the household. So talk a little bit about that. And then talk a little bit about your parenting because you adopted um, this incredible being, <clears throat> Rex. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so talk about you, how, what has parenting taught you who's now 15 so, and just got his so, learners yes i know he's driving and um you know i have to say i i see all these sort of memes about oh i have a teenager and he's horrible or she's horrible and she's so mean to me and you know find some wood he remains this chill amazing young soul that teaches me more about how to just be content in any given moment than i will ever teach him he's he's a he's pretty astonishing um but yeah so shankara is um the the stories and again i'm super condensing so just <laughs> go with it but the stories of shankara are um when he is a householder yes he does he has two children um and that very much related to me so in other traditions um you know jesus we can argue how we want to do that but in it, you know in theory jesus is a single male um and became very hard for me to relate to that and again how do you how do you live this this peaceful enlightened life and also sit down at your desk and work at a law firm and also have to pick up your kid from soccer when it's the absolute last thing that you want to do um so it's it's very powerful for me to see that as a as a symbol one of the other pieces of um of Shankara, Shiva as Shankara is, it's also the time when he um, he's, he's being attacked by this demon or Shiva and Shakti are being attacked by this demon and um, who's trying to break them up, trying to get between them. And so he actually fuses with Shakti, with the divine feminine. So the, the images of Shiva as Shankara are half male, half female. Um, and so again, finding that, that balance, how do you live a spiritual life and be in the world also? How do you hold on to this peacefulness that we feel after a yoga class or after a breath work session, hopefully, um, and then carry that into the, the day to day having to make dinner finding that balance how do we fuse those two pieces together in our in ourself and um so that's what i have tried and continue to try to to do is is balance those two um energies in in every way in my life yeah beautifully answered um i know that your yoga classes and your breath work for sure not are for everybody uh, but that you have a retreat coming up uh, specifically for men in Costa Rica. Do you mm -hmm. want to talk a little bit about that? So this is my third time back at um, Blue Osa, which is on the very south. It's it's um, you can see Panama. <laughs> um, it's a it's a beautiful space, and yes, it's a this this one is is geared towards men. Um, so it is men and male identifying students. I have found um, that there's something really powerful about men coming together um, with an intention of, of growing, of taking off the layers, of really exploring and being um, 
exposed to one another. I mean, it, it, it sounds a little a little cliche, but it's really, um, it, it's such an amazing and transformative experience to be with um, a group of men. And I think that um, in, in my experience, men really, um, God, we, we, we need it. We, we need it so badly. Um, we need it. <laughs> yeah. And for anybody who hasn't been to Costa Rica, it's just an amazing country. The, the retreat center is mm. right on the water. On the Three types of monkeys. It's it is. It's right on the water. We do. There are all these hikes that we go on with waterfalls and the monkeys and those um, blue morpho butterflies. You feel like you're in Disney World. It's hard for honestly. Yeah, you do. You feel, it's hard for my brain to understand that this is actual nature and woods with these it's it's stunning it's really a, a stunning and aaron who i teach with who's one of the owners of blue osa is really a, a beautiful man as well a wonderful teacher and he and i um teach together the 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 week involves some traditional yoga it's welcome to um if you've never taken any yoga before or if you we get some teachers that come down and and um take from us as well we also teach all of the aspects of yoga. So I, I do a breathwork session as a part of it. Um, we teach mantra, we teach uh, yoga as a, as a broader idea of how to live in the world. And it gives you opportunity to practice your Spanish. Um, it does, <laughs> it really does. <laughs> What's the name of, of the app that you're at? What in fifteen hundred consecutive days? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm at. No, I think I'm at thir thirteen five or something. Yeah, I I do. I just try to do just. Sometimes it's it's. I get angry with it. <laughs> I just want to go to bed. Um, but I always try to do do a little something. So yeah, thirteen hundred days, almost fourteen hundred days on Duolingo, and and I I love it. It's it's a it's it's. It's little, some days I do more, some days I do less. I feel like at this point I should be wildly fluent and I am embarrassingly not, um, but I um, adore it. And um, it's, a, it's a goal to keep growing and learning and exploring, not just Spanish, but in life. Well, if you were if you were able to or chose to uh, do immersion, like go to a Spanish-speaking country for six months, a year, where would you go? Oh, that's a grand question. Um, I don't have a solid answer to that. I think actually, I would want to. I would want like two months here, and then two months there, and then two months somewhere else. Um, probably beginning to beginning focused in um, Central America. And then just this last year, I had an opportunity to go to Mexico twice and um, loved that as well. And so my, my familiarity circle happens to be that now and Rex, my son was born in Guatemala, um, but opportunities to, to be elsewhere, um, South America, um, I would I would grab in an eighteenth of a second. Yeah, well, as you know, I've I've also been on the, on that journey. Even though Spanish is my first language, um, I've been in the U.S. and done all my reading and studying in English since age ten. So part of my intention this last year has been to really improve my vocabulary, my ability to to communicate one hundred percent in Spanish, not in Spanglish, jumping back and forth. Um, <laughs> And so one of the things that, that's been really good for me, in addition to being immersed in, in Ecuador, um, was Netflix University, you know, watching series after series in Spanish with the subtitles in Spanish as well, so that I'm getting it through two different senses. Um, I've got to do my subtitles in English so far, <laughs> which I have found is, it's good for me, but the the my hurdle with that is, I, I, I'm not getting enough 
Spanish. There's certain certain Spanishes that are far easier for me to understand. I still contend that Cuban Spanish isn't really Spanish. It's Cuban. Because <laughs> 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 I get none of it. Um, yeah, we, we do speak fast and we chop up the end, chop off the end of the words. Yeah, Panamanian Spanish to me is 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 great. I get much more of it. It's interesting. Um, but I have to I have to stop and actually focus so when i'm watching tv it's it's hard it's a, it's a good lesson too do i ever sit down um but i have to stop i can't be cooking i can't be doing anything else just because i'm at that stage so it's definitely a, a place where i need to be there um for periods of time which is which is in the hatching but again Sometime. It'll, it'll happen, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Buena suerte con, con tu español. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, um, we're, we're intentionally trying to keep these short and sweet. Um, yeah. So we'll just, I mean, you and I can continue talking, of course. And, <laughs> um, have fun doing it. So thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing your, your wisdom with us and your uh, doing it so authentically. Um, And thank you, everybody else. You've got the link to get together with, to get, to connect with um, Colby. Um, we can also send you his email if you want to be put in touch with him. Thank you for your time. Everybody have a great weekend, wherever you are. Uh, much love, many blessings. Y un abrazo. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I appreciate being here and appreciate, appreciate what you were, um, have brought to my life. And, um, what you bring to to so many as well so it's a true gift and a blessing thank you <laughs> yeah.